When I was six years old, Saturday evenings at exactly precisely six o'clock held a very special place in my heart. I would place myself by the TV 10 minutes before the program I was waiting for would begin and I'd start the countdown automatically in my head in preparation for the program I was waiting for. And after an eternity of waiting, the opening credits would begin to roll. It's the Muppet Show with our very special guest star, Mr. Steve Martin. Now at six years old, the Muppet Show was the biggest highlight of the week for me. Now all the characters I knew and loved would perform skits for me personally as I sat there at home with my Saturday night Coca-Cola in my hands and laughed my little head off. But there was one character that stood out just that little bit extra for me and that was the Swedish chef and his adventures in the kitchen had me in stitches and I do wonder if that was the beginning of my own interest in food and all things culinary. English burn the Swedish meatballs. Today we're taking a leaf out of the Swedish chef's own cookbook and taking a closer look at the origins of the mighty meatball. Let's go! The meatball is a bit of a mystery in the world of food history, a bit like Animal from the Muppet Show, as no one really knows where and how the first meatball popped up. But the most common and accepted theory between food historians is that the old meatball originally comes from Persia. Now in Persia there's a food called kofta, which basically means pounded meat and can be prepared in many different ways. It's essentially a dish made up of minced beef, pork, chicken or lamb, mixed with rice, bulgur or mashed lentils. Based on the shape, ingredients and preparation, most experts trust that this is where our traditional meatball is derived from. In the early stages, meatballs were basically made from the leftover meat that was pounded and shredded by hand, so that it could be rolled into small balls. It was a necessity dish that was made by common people so that the leftover food could be used again. This is probably why the earliest recipes were not recorded. Those people back in the day didn't know how to write. The Persians most likely passed it on to the Arab world where kofta is mentioned in some of the earliest Arab cookbooks and here it consisted of lamb rolled into orange sized balls and glazed with egg yolk and saffron. It's probably safe to assume that the meatball continued its journey from the Arab world along trade routes through Greece, North Africa and Spain where more versions of the same dish were established. You could say the meatball is the culinary world's version of the United Nation as it tied nations together in the form of gastronomy. Regions played a big part in the components of the actual dish. For example, China had an abundance of pork and therefore made pork meatballs. And Roman eaters enjoyed peacock, pheasant and rabbit meatballs. In fact, in the 1800s, the English Oxford Dictionary defined the meatball as any combination of raw or cooked meat shaped into a ball. With such a broad definition, all cultures had room to create their own staple dish of the recipe. Like many other foods, it was the invention of a kitchen tool that made the meatball into an exciting and sought after dish. The age of the meat grinder gave chefs the opportunity to start using fresh meat and meant they could start crafting out the meals from the ingredients we know and love today. At present, there's a million different ways you can enjoy a meatball. Almost every culture in the world has its own version of it. But in essence, all it is is a humble round ball of meat that's brought joy to an entire world. Pretty much like the Muppets can bring joy to a six-year-old boy. A vast array of different characters, spiced up with varying ingredients and thrown into a pot of entertainment for a brief spell and it's probably prepared and served up by this guy. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to watch History of a Dish. If you enjoyed yourself and actually did learn something, then take a risk and hit the subscribe button. We've got a lot of things planned for this channel, so it would be an absolute honor to have you tag along for the ride. Until next time, take care.